français. I had a question for you. I was kind of curious. What do you think about this uh, this new video with uh, this pregnant woman supposedly getting ready to faint? Almost kind of reminiscent to that uh, that Sandy Hook footage of the uh, the dad of the, one of the slain children, you know, walking up and making eye contact with somebody and starting to kind of giggle. Uh, kind of reminiscent to that. It uh, it definitely. Uh, Mrs. Indy Soul Preppers, and one brought it to my attention when we, we was watching it, and it, immediately it hit my gut. Like, man, I, I've seen this before. It don't seem right. Um, it definitely reminded me of um, some old documentaries I've seen. And uh, if you get a chance and you find some Russian uh, documentaries on Nazi Germany, I uh, highly recommend them. You got to catch them in the English subs, though. But they are very meticulous in breaking down their propaganda. Um, really incredible. I mean, there's 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 tons of footage where uh, you know they're having the Nazi Party rally and uh, the processions, you know, coming down and Hitler's doing his little waves and whatever, and uh, everybody's saluting to the Fuhrer. And then on cue, you know, that they send out a little blonde girl, uh, you know, goes running out there with a bouquet of flowers and gives them to Hitler and gives him a big hug and kiss and oh, you know, he's He's, uh, you know, he's the daddy figure. He's, he's, uh, he's Fjord, you know, Lord of the State. And uh, that was a tool that they used. But, you know, it, it didn't necessarily originate in that regime. Uh, filmmakers were, were developing this even before Hitler came around. I mean, he just kind of came into power right at its apex, like when making film or propaganda or pro, uh, product placement, whatever you want to call it, advertisements, uh, you know, he came in right there at the peak. I mean, let's not forget, you know, TV was invented like in 19, oh, I want to say 10 or 1920 or something like that. It was made in the laboratory or invented in the laboratory in, uh, in London. Uh, very crude uh, wood and uh, large glass tubes and whatnot. But, you know, just from that inventing of that, and then moving on in, into the silent film era, which kind of uh, peaked around like 30 or 33 with uh, an awesome movie called um, Metropolis. Highly recommend that. It's very, very interesting. And if you look at any um, reviews on that movie from people in the know or who, in the, who are in the business, they'll tell you that, you know, that was like the pinnacle of filmmaking. And that's still the same platform and format that they use to this day. Uh, of course, that movie is a silent film, but nevertheless, you know, the, uh, the cinema photography and uh, just the way film's done, that, that was it. That was, the, that was the perfecting of that model, and they've still used that same model. I mean, of course, we got CGI, and uh, obviously uh, it's not silent anymore, and, and it's in color and whatnot, but the same, the principles and, and the format for making film is the same except instead of uh, using you know film ribbon and cutting and editing you know we're doing it on computers but it's still the same format still the same style but I uh, highly recommend you watch Metropolis's or Metropolis it's uh, gets into well they were really trying to I, I'm not sure if they were for or against uh, a new world order but uh, they really lay it out in Metropolis. I mean, that thing was done in like 30 or 1930 or 33. And uh, man, they were talking about it. Uh, I don't want to give anything away because I want you to watch it because it's, it's a good film. And But they talk about Tower of Babel and uh, there's references to Moloch. And uh, in case you don't know who Moloch is, uh, he's a Canaanite deity, uh, basically just... Um, uh, another version of Satan, if you will, you know. Um, the Bible says anybody is not of Christ, they are of Antichrist. So, the devil has many faces. Um, but Moloch's one of them, you know. And that was something that that people did in the Bible days, you know. You had the priest class, and, you know, and they were under uh, demonic influence. So, uh, one of the deities that they were worshiping was Moloch. And, uh, 
You know, they were having people throwing their kids in there to the flames of Moloch, and uh, child sacrifice went on, and it still does to this day. Of course, now it's more modernized. We don't we don't call it child sacrifice. We call it uh, Planned Parenthood, or uh, we call it a uh, you know pro-choice. Um, but you know, make no mistake. Uh, the powers that be are still sacrificing children to Moloch. That's just Planned Parenthood now. And uh, if you look in the recent videos, I'm, <clears throat> I think it was in Texas, the women were out there uh, protesting abortion, and uh, then here come the uh, the Moloch heads, you know, uh, the New Agers and the, the modern day Satanists, and uh, they're out there uh, chanting, you know, hail Satan, hail Satan. I'm getting off into the weeds here, but you know. That movie is very interesting. It breaks down a lot of things. Uh, it gets into uh, the singularity issue in that movie, uh, you know, with man merging with machine and uh, living forever. And uh, that's in that movie. Um, they are still promoting aspects of that movie to this day. Uh, even though it was made in 1930 or so, they're still using it here in 2013. If you look up Beyonce in robot costume or at the VMAs. I'm not really sure where it was. I don't really follow that stuff unless it's newsworthy that pertains to uh, what's going on and, and uh, what we're, what's being pushed on us through the mainstream media. But she was wearing one of the outfits that are in that movie. It's just amazing. And if you watch that movie, when you first see that outfit, it's like on an altar almost, and there's like a, there's an inverted pentagram, you know, the Baphomet. This is 1930, so, you know, uh, um, I think it was Ezekiel said, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> that's uh, very true, you know. This, this, everything that's going on, it, it went on back in the day, in Bible days, and uh, this, this is just, you know, it's just modernized. That's all it is, you know. Look at it this way, you know, we're, we're in the Jetsons area, and back then it was the Flintstones area, okay, for those uh, who get that analogy. It's just modernized. Um, anyway, back to the topic. Do you think that was a, a stage deal with, with her falling or fainting and him catching her and saying, I got you, you know, appearing to be Mr. Obamacare right in the middle of his debacle where the thing don't even work and... Uh, more people are signing up to go to the, go to Mars and never come back uh, to this planet than they are signing up for uh, Obamacare. So it was that an, a, a feeble attempt to try to look at me, uh, you know, I'll catch you. So, you know, I care. Uh, sure seems like it. You know, if you look at, like I say, you look at history, you look at Warren Buffett, Mr. Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, you know, front man, uh, matchstick man, whatever you want to call him. Always got that ice cream cone. Nelson Rockefeller back in the day, always, you know, stuffing pennies and dimes and nickels in people's hands saying, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not Mr. Robert Barron. I'm not Mr. Uh, uh, competition is a sin here. I'm always giving money out, you know. And when he owns the newspapers, they're happy to take the pictures for him. So is this just, again, another version of that? I don't know. It reminds me of a movie I saw the other day. True story. It was just the other day. I watched a Funny Farm with Chevy Chase. A hilarious old movie. Um, I ain't that crazy about the way they try to, you know, portray the small town life. You know, they try to make everybody make everybody out to be jerks in that movie that were in a small town. Because the storyline, he was trying to move out because they were all so horrible. He was from the city, but he ended up having to pay off his neighbors and whatnot to be decent people in order for him to sell his house. And there's one scene where the neighbors are in there, or not neighbors, but the prospective buyers are in there and they're looking out the window, you know, it's, it's winter time and, you know, it's out in the country and everything's snow covered. And then the uh, town people who are actually working for them trying to help sell their house because they're going to get some money out of it, they release this deer on cue. They're like, cue the deer. And they let it go. And it goes, you know, galloping off through the snow, and the neighbor, and the people are in there wanting to buy the house. They're like, "Oh wow, you know, look at that! It's so awesome! This is perfect." Well, is it? <laughs> you know, was uh, was that Obama? You know, was that cueing the deer when Obama did the little catch? I don't know. You know, you tell me. I'm I'm kind of curious to what you think. 
uh, you know, I don't want to make too much of a big deal about it. I kind of use it as an excuse to, to tell you about Metropolis and get into, uh, you know, the propaganda and, uh, and really understand, you know, that there's messages out there, you know, in these movies. Um, just don't, just, what I tell my kids is, first of all, they don't watch Disney. And if you, YouTube's full of movies uh, or videos to tell you why you ought not watch Disney stuff. But what I tell my kids, you know, always remember that there's there's some there's somebody on the sidelines there that you don't see that's making sure the message or the idea or the story that you're want they're wanting you to come away with they're working hard and paid well to do it. You know, your costume people, uh, your lighting. Uh, your background, your your music, your animations, your CGI, your uh, cinematography, your makeup, all that's there to make sure that you walk away with whatever message or story that they wanted to uh, portray, they wanted you to walk away from. It's nothing new. Same thing that went on with the priest class uh, thousands of years ago. Uh, you know, they put on shows, rituals, uh, they gain knowledge by paying attention while living off of the working man. They were able to sit back and watch and had time to look at the stars and the moon and figure out when there was going to be an eclipse and when there was going to be this or that. They were able to do that because they were living off the backs of other people. They didn't have to work. They didn't have to go find their food. They had other people doing it for them because they're evil men, and that's what evil men do. They was doing it then. They're doing it now. Uh, the rituals and all that stuff went on through the Middle Ages, and you got into Shakespeare and theater and play. I'm sure there was propaganda in that. You don't think there was a royalty around that time? You don't think some of those plays might have been encouraged, uh, you know, to get a certain kind of thought or uh, a mindset to the masses? Absolutely. Still going on. Um, and they use that as control, and it's the same thing. Uh, the Nazi Germany do, used it. They invented our, our school system that we use. Uh, kindergarten that comes that's a German word uh, that they actually kind of adapted from Prussia uh, you know basically selling the, the child on the idea that the state is the supreme deal and uh, you know they ignore any history that that paints uh, the state or whoever's in charge of the state at that time in a bad light they want it's it's, it's nothing new folks but I'm, I'm curious to what you think about that video uh, do you think it was staged? Was it another Sandy Hook uh, laughing dad moment? Was it Obama jumping the shark? Let me know. I'm curious. I'm going to see if I can't dig up that video for you so maybe I can play it right after my uh, I get done here rambling on. But I just thought it was this interesting thing to talk about. Definitely check out Metropolis. I think it might be on YouTube. Uh, there's a couple different versions. Watch the newer one. Uh, that that uh, that some I think somebody's touched it up. It's a silent movie, but they've touched it up and where you can see and uh, read everything better. It's still true to form to the, as the original. It's just cleaner, and then they just the, they digitized it and uh, you know cleaned up the pixels and whatnot. But definitely check out Metropolis. Very interesting. You won't regret it. Anyway, that's so John's, uh, that's it for now. He was been, frustrated uh, by the website. Prepper. And, uh, but he's feeling a little less frustrated once he bus. found out that he was saving 900 bucks a month on his health insurance. And John's right. The website's going to get fixed. And the law works. That's why we fought so hard to pass this law, to save folks like John money to give people who don't have health insurance the chance to get it for the first time, to lift from the American people the crushing burden of unaffordable health care, to free families from the pervasive fear that one illness I got you. No, no, you're, you're okay. This happens when I talk too long. <laughs> Good catch, by the way, whoever was here.
Coffee. Coffee, no! 